Okay, so I want to talk to you about how to get good at maths. Okay, so there's so many things I could really talk about here. But I kind of just want to focus on the basics for now. So let's just talk about stuff like, you know, like, just kind of time commitment and just being able to, like, what, what, what does it even mean to get good at maths? Okay, so, um, so I, I don't mean superficially good at maths where you can pass a test or something. I actually mean, like, like, and you forget about it right after the test. I mean, you actually get good enough. So that it doesn't matter what the test is, even if you don't prepare for it, you can still ace the test, or you just have like an, an ability to do maths that that doesn't depend on sort of basically cheating in the exam or knowing sort of something about the answers ahead of time. You can just do maths, okay? Solve problems you've never seen before, and and um, explain them to someone else, I guess. But so ten thousand hours, people say, is like how long it takes to master something, I can give you an idea of the time. So, see, you got to understand maths is a more difficult subject than other things. So, for example, like languages. So people say, oh, you learn a language. That's not the same as learning maths. And maths is not a language. Maths is a way of thinking. It's, it's much more advanced than a language. So to learn a language, it might take someone 2,000 hours. And, and, and you could almost be guaranteed to be able to learn it quite well in that time frame. Or something like like maths, I think you could learn it for ten thousand hours and still not achieve anywhere near the kind of mastery that you would say you've achieved with the language. Okay, so maybe give you an example. So I have a, I had a student from year nine to year twelve. Okay, and let's say I think we'd put like around five thousand hours of mathematics. Okay, and then they achieved quite a high level in the high school level. They they managed to get. Um, a silver medal in the IMO representing Australia. Okay, and so there's this there's this their fundamental time commitment. So whereas other other endeavors, the time and the commitment kind of guarantees your success, like in basketball. But in mathematics, I think it's a huge time commitment, more than others, and it doesn't necessarily guarantee your success. Okay, so so that that's that's a big issue there. Um, but how can we how can we tackle this problem um, the most efficiently. I mean, we, we've, we can, we've learned a lot, especially the jargon from the, the, the AI and just general kind of reinforcement learning and this kind of stuff. So, I mean, if you just put the time in, so this would be what you maybe call self-study um, or unsupervised reinforcement learning. If you just put the time in, um, you'll still need to put in a lot of time to, to reach the results. But um, I think having a mentor or a teacher who's dedicated to improving um, your abilities with you will do a lot to leverage that time. So this is what you might call supervised reinforcement learning. So you could say like, you know, maybe it would have taken someone at self-study 10,000 hours to get from sort of beginner level to, to this international maths Olympiad level. Um, and because of the the leveraged supervision and mentoring, that that could that same person to getting to the same level might have only taken five thousand hours. Okay, so and I don't want you to think of that as like a hack. I don't want you to think, oh, I just saved five thousand hours. I just want like if I do it it's something even more clever, I'll be able to do it in like two minutes. That's not really the point. I think fundamentally you're going to have to spend time, but but really it's so, but but the difference in time comes from the quality of the learning, you know, because there's there's lots of things, um, which you know you can spend time on, but you won't come to any realizations until you figure something out, which which definitely can help when there's someone else involved. Okay, but and another thing I guess is with self study, so. You know, especially really young kids, they're, they're notoriously bad at sort of self-awareness, um, consciousness, and just kind of being a, like being able to understand the problem rigorously. So a lot of the time, especially if you have all these terrible YouTube channels giving you sort of entertainment maths, they give you sort of actually, the maths is actually wrong, okay? So the maths is wrong, but you believe it. And not only do you believe it, you kind of subconsciously believe that's how maths should be done. Not only will that, like that time, not contribute to your ten thousand. I think it's contributing 
to you have to actually undo this to really progress in in, in math. So there's lots of sort of traps out there, and but there are a lot of students who self study. Okay, but I guess the point is they're not really taking full advantage of of the resources around them, and obviously you hope that in principle everyone can get there in the end because um, that's sort of like the romantic view of maths. But but realistically, um, you know, saving five thousand hours makes a big difference, especially early on. Okay, don't get me wrong. The goal the goal is independent self-study that is the final goal like you don't want to have a mentor for your whole life okay there's got to be a point where sort of your your frontal lobe develops your mind closes up and you're like i'm ready to take on maths on my own um i've, I've reached this level and then and then you're fully just independent and that's that's sort of the perfect educational story All right um yeah but but having sort of that kickstart with the supervision can be really helpful. Okay, so there's downsides to this trip because you have to. It's a, at some point, you know, you are kind of still self-studying because you're kind of like you have to trust your mentor in a certain way. And there's a lot of things, you know. While it's nice to say you can verify, you can't really verify that easily. Um. So you know, like for example, if you're just shooting a basketball over and over again, if all you're seeing is that the ball goes in the ring or it doesn't go in the ring, and you just keep shooting until all the balls go into the ring, like that method will actually make you a master of shooting. But how long that takes you depends on the quality of each shot. Okay, so if you're just watching it for going in or not, then that'll probably take you the maximum amount of time. Um, and maybe produce kind of like the strangest kind of result, like um, maybe a little bit different than what you might expect. Um, but if you're kind of thinking about every shot, and you're kind of thinking what contributes to your shot and sort of how is it missing when it's missing or how is it going in when it's going in, when you kind of got more data on each shot, more quality, you might come to the to the mastery much sooner, okay? But then the problem is when you make these mistakes, it could also deviate you from the past. So someone telling you, oh, you should shoot with your arm like this and you don't know why, but you just believe them. So that that's something like, if it's true, then you will arrive at mastery sooner. But if it's false, not only will you arrive at mastery later, it'll kind of screw up with your sort of understanding of this process quite a lot. Um, yeah. Yeah, so that's that's the basics of it. I mean, there's other questions that are surrounding this. Like, do I have to be smart um, to be good at maths? Or, or do I... like? Is, so this is the whole, like... I'm telling you, hard work does not guarantee you succeed at maths, right? Um, being smart and hard work kind of almost guarantees it, but the way you got to view intelligence, it's it's not a fixed thing, right? Well, the reason we're learning maths is to get smarter, okay? So if you're always of the attitude that I'm not smart enough to do this, so I'm not going to do this, or or like my my intelligence is basically fixed, and if I qualify, I qualify. If I don't, I don't. Then not only are you not going to be very smart at the end of this you'll be much much dumber than you could have been and you could possibly be very stupid okay because a lot of the time like someone someone who's like visibly very obviously much smarter than someone else like they might not have started that much smarter than that person you know but over time like imagine if someone just a little bit smarter but they spent all their time even getting smarter training their brain um, to think, being more mentally fit, everything just to make themselves better. And someone who was just a little, little bit worse, but they kind of just gave up on that. And they just kind of fed their brain the stupidest, most irrelevant things. Um, the difference is going to be huge even in like a, a one year's time, you know? Like think about like if you have like a 1% edge in just decision making and you make like hundreds of thousands of decisions every week or whatever, like you're going to be so much more ahead of this other person who kind of just gave up and who's probably allowing even a bigger leak than that. Okay. And so you don't really want to be this other person, you know, like, and imagine if you weren't even that smart to begin with. So, so if you were the second person in that case, you're already pretty dumb to start with. Then the final outcome of your, your decision not to pursue intelligence is absolutely devastating.